Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We're about to begin our afternoon services, which can be found in your red prayer books, Sidur Lev Shalem, on page 289. Our service begins with Ashrei. Ashrei o shvei vetech, haudi haleluha sela, Ashrei ha'am shekachalo, Ashrei ha'am shalonah ha'yelo havti la le david, Aromim kan ha'emet, Kadon ha'emet, Kadon ha'emet, Kadon ha'emet, Hadar kevodo dek, Kadon ha'emet, Kadon ha'emet, Zeh farab tukai bide tukai nene, Nukai nene tukai nene, Kadon ha'emet, 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 Please rise, page 290. Bagalavizman Kari Vimru Amen Yehesh Me Raba Mevarach Le Alam Ulal Me Almaya Yit Barach Vishtabakit Par Vitroman Vitrase Vitadar Vitlev Tlash Merikudsha Brikule Lamin Kol Birkata Vichirata Tushpechat Havelech Mata Damiram Be Alma Vimeru Amen We join together for the beginning of our Mincha Amida, page 291. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol Agibor ve'anora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim ve'kone Yaakov, Bezocher Chaste Havot, Umevi Goel Livnei v'nehem leman shemo be'ava. Melech Ozer Uthokein Moshia O Magein, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magein Avraham Uthokein Sarah, Ata Gibol Leolam Adonai, Mechaye Meitim Ata Rav Leoshia, Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hagashem, Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed, Mechaye Meitim Berachamim Rabihim, Somech Noflim Verofe Cholim Umatir Asurihim, Umekaye memuratoli shene afar, Micha mocha bal geburot, umidon melach, Melech me me to mechaye umats miach yeshua, Vene emana tale hachayot metim, baruchata adonai, mechaye ametim. Page two ninety three, Kedusha. Nekade shechim ha baulam kashem shemakti shimotobish me marum kaka tuvan yan nabiye kavikara ze el ze vyamar kadosh 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 aronai tsevot melo kola aretz kevodo leumatam baruch yomeru baruch kevod aronai mimekomo of the breko cheka katuv le mor Yim lo charonai leolam lo ha yich zion dor va dor haluruyah le dor va dor na gigon lecha ule netzach netzachim krushat cha na kdihish veshiv cha cha eloheinu mi piru lo yemush le lam va ed ki el melakadol ve kadosh at habaruch at haronai ha el akadosh. We continue privately, pages two hundred and ninety four through two hundred and ninety nine.
you're still praying your Amidah, please continue at your own pace. Our service continues on page 300 with Kaddish Shalem. Yit Kadal Vit Kalashime Raba, Beal Mari Vra Kirute Vemik Malkute, Bechayechon, Uvimkon of Harkobet Israel, Bagalavis Mankari, Vemeru, Amen, Yehesh, Me Raba, Mevarach, Le Alam, Ulalme, Almaya, Yit Barach, Vishabach, Vit Parvit Roma, Vitrasse, Vita Darvitale Vitalal, Shemer Kutsha, Brikule, Lamin Kol, Birkata, Shirata, Tushbakat, Havakamata, Dominami, Ma, Vemru, Vimru, Amen, Yehesh, Lama Raba. Michamaya Vehaim, Alen Vel Kor Israel, Vimeru, Ame, no se shalom, Vimromav, Uya se shalom, Alenu Vel Kor Israel, Vimeru, Ame, Alenu le Shabe Achladon Hakol, La Tate Kedula Leot Seher Breshit, Shelo Asanu Kegoye Haratzot, Velo Samanu Kemish Pechota Adama. Shelo sam chelkenu kahem, vegor aleinu kechol hamonam, vanachnu koreim, umishtachavim, umodim, lifne melech malche amelachim, akadosh baruchu. Shehu no teshamayim yisrael kim tachem, hu eloheinu einu. Akatul betorate haronaim loch leolam vahed, venemar vehayadonai, lemelech al kol haaretz, bayom hahu, bayom hahu, ye adonai echad, ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. The end of the Mincha service marks the completion of the 21st day of Adar Bet. And in loving devotion, we recall the yardsites of David Goldman, Esther Horowitz, Abraham Kadisha, David Lehman, Eleanor Manes, Franny Newman, Francis Rabanian, Yohevet Shamspur, Victoria Simanian, Kenneth Weiner, Marvin Weitz. And this evening begins the 22nd day of Adar Bet. And we recall the yardsites of Sophia Ashel, Marion Bauer, Nathan Croman, Nemet Faruzenrod, Renee Greenberg, Sarah Kanner, Joseph Benjamin Marsh, Abraham Marshall, Musa Masabad, Salo Moskovitz, Esther Schechter, Esther Sommer, Sonia Vidish Taff, and Robert Traub. And of course, we're recalling the recent passing of Eunice Nazarian. We ask all those in mourning or observing a yard site to remain standing. Kaddish Yatom, the mourner's Kaddish, can be found on page 302. Yit Gadal, the Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabah. Be alma divrach kirute, ve amlich malchute, ve chayechon uviomechon uve chaye de hol bet Israel, ba agala uvisman kari ve imru, amen. Yehe shme raba mevarach le alam ulalme almaya. Yit barach ve ishtabach, ve it paar, ve it roman, ve it nase, ve it hadar, ve it ale, ve it halal, shemer kudsha, rihu le ela min kol birchata ve shirata, tush pechata ve nechemata. Damiram bi alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shmaya vechayim alenu ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom bimromav hu ya ase shalom alenu ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. We remain standing for our Mariv service. We're found on page 264. 264. Vehu rachlim yachapera von velo yashchigit. Vehir ba la hashiva pobla yir kochamato. Adonai hoshia. Hamelech ya anenu veyom korenu. Barhu et Adonai hambora. Baruch Adonai am Borach Leolam Ba'ed. Please be seated. El Chai v'Kayam Tamidim Loch Aleinu Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Hamariv Aravim. Avat Olam Beit Yisrael. 
ואהבתך אל תעשה ממנו לעולמים, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוהב עמו ישראל. שמה is found on page 265. שמה ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד. ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך. We continue silently on our own, page 266. <laughs> אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. ואמנות ובות אתם עלינו כי ראתם אלוהים. אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. ואמנות ובות אתם עלינו כי ראתם אלוהים. ומלכותו ברצון קיבלו עליהם. משה ומרים ובני ישראל לך ענו שירה. בשמחה רבה, ויאמרו כולם, מי כמוך באלים אדוני, מי כמוך נדר בקודש, נורא תהילות או אוסף פלא, מלכותך ראו בניך, בוקעים לפני משה, זה לי ענו ויאמרו, אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד. ונאמר כי פדה אדוני את יעקב, וגלו מיד חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, גאל ישראל. השיבנו אדוני אלוהים השלום. ושמור צאתנו ובואנו לחיים ושלום מעתה ויד עולם, ברוך אתה אדוני, שומר עמו ישראל לעד. We continue silently, page ברוך אתה אדוני המלך בכבודו תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם ועד ועל כל מעשיו. Please rise, middle of page 269. יתגדל ויקדש שמי רבה בעלמא דברה כדרותי וימליך מלכותי בחיי חון ובימי חון ובחיי רחובי ישראל בגלל בזמן קריב אמרו אמן יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ומעמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרועם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתלה ויתלה על שם אלה קודשה בריכו לאלה ומכו ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירם בעלמא ואמרו אמן. The silent Amida begins on page 270 continuing through page 278. 
You can take this time to read the words in the Hebrew, the words in the English, or offer the meditations of your heart. Say shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru v'imru amen. Oh, say shalom b'imromav. Hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru v'imru. Amen. We can keep going. Ya se shalom. Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Ya se shalom. Ya se shalom. Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. We continue with Kaddish Shalem, page 280. It got all vicarashime rabba, bell ma divra kirutevium lif mahute, vechaehon, uviomehon, ukeho bet Israel, bagalavis mancari vimru. Amen, ye heish me rabba me barach, le alam olome amaya. It barach be ishtalach vit paar vitromam vit nasa, vit hadar vitala vitala shmeda kucha. Brihu le ela mikoberhata vishirata, tushbehata venechamata. Amiram Belma Vimru Amen Tika Baltzalot Hon about Honda for Israel Kodam of a Hondi Vishmaya Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Bechaim Alenu Belko Israel Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Vimroma Hu Ya Se Shalom Alenu Belko Israel Vimru Amen We remain standing for Alenu, page 281. 
Alenu lishabeach la adon ha kol, la tet gedula liotse er breshit, shelo asanu kegoye ha aratsot, velo samanu kamishpechota adama, shelo sam chelkenu kahem, vegor alenu kecho hamonam, fa'anach nu korim, umitachavim umodim, lifne melech. Mahe ham lachim ha kadosh baruchu. Shevin at Shamayim, the Yotze Aretz. Kaka tu pitorate ha adunayim loch leolam va ed. Vene emar vehaya adonai lemelech al kol haaretz bayom hahu bayom hahu hiya adonai echad ushemo 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 echad. I'll ask those who are in mourning or observing yard site to please remain standing for the words of the Mourner's Kaddish, which are found on page 282. Page 282. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba be'alma divra kirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chayei d'cho be'israel ba'agala u'v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shmei raba mevarach le'elam ulamei amaya. Yit barach ve'yishtavach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase. V'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shmei d'kudusha b'rifu. Le'ela minkol b'erchata v'shirata. Tush v'chata v'nechamata da'amiran be'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehei shlama raba min shemaya. Vechaim alenu ve'alko Yisrael v'imru amen. Osei shalom v'imromav hu ya'asei shalom alenu ve'alko Yisrael v'imru amen. May the peace in the heavens be extended here on earth, and let us say, amen. Please be seated. As customary to share a word of Torah at the end of a Shiva minion, I wanted to share that I came across a beautiful piece of Midrash, a beautiful piece of rabbinic commentary that looked at the patriarchs of our tradition and noticed something special, something special about the relationship that can be built between a grandfather and grandchildren. The Midrash explains that a person that devotes time to playing and learning and spends time with their grandchildren, that you can call that person a zaken, a very wise sage. I was reading a commentary on this Midrash by Rabbi Soloveitchik, and he says that such a person who joins their grandchildren in becoming co-dreamers and co-searchers that kind of person, that zaken, he writes, understands the language of Mispar Hadorot, the uniting of generations. The Rav says that some people can try. You can try to play such a role. But that kind of role in a grandchild's life, that kind of role in which the grandchild learns who they are by spending time with that grandparent, that's a talent that very few possess. And so I wanted to close the prayers this evening, remarking on what I've seen over the last week, and I know it will continue this evening. I've seen Eunice's grandchildren standing on this bima, speaking both about their grandfather's playful spirit, but also his confidence in each of them. It is clear that out of the many, many accomplishments in Eunice's life together with Soraya, developing beautiful, respectful, loving relationships with each of their children and grandchildren, it's clearly one of the deepest of their priorities. 
So yes, certainly, Yunus was a zaken, a wise soul, a wise sage. But he was a zaken that offered the most important of lessons, encouraging his grandchildren to be themselves. May his abilities transcend generations, reminding us to offer wisdom of the mind, and perhaps more importantly, wisdom of the heart. May Eunice's memory forever be a blessing. Let us say, Amen. Going to ask everyone to please rise as we recite together our ancient words of comfort. Hamakom yinachem edchem betoch she'ar of Zion v'Yerushalayim. May God comfort you together with all mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And let us say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's almost 6.15 now. The memorial service will begin at 6.30, so we have a little bit of a break. Um, but once again, the memorial service will begin promptly at 6.30. Thank you all for coming.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the memorial service of our dear Eunice Nazarian. First and foremost, um, I would like to ask that you turn off your cell phones, please. No buzzers, no sounds, no melodies or music. Please turn them off out of respect for this beautiful memorial service that the family has planned for you. On behalf of the Nazarian family, I would like to welcome you to this celebration of the life of our dear Eunice Nazarian. There are so many of you here tonight, and we know that many of you wanted to share your memories and your appreciation for him publicly. The family sincerely appreciates that, and as time did not permit, decided to feature only speakers tonight who knew Eunice personally. Nevertheless, we appreciate the outpouring of love and support that you have shown to the Nazarian family. The loss of a loved one at any age is a difficult burden to bear. The loss of such a giant as Eunice was is deeply felt by his family and the many communities around the world which he had touched. Soraya being my first cousin, I had known them ever since I was a child and even then I appreciated the honest love between these two and the caring, respectful family they had created. Even at an early age, they both became my role models. To me, Eunice was like a father. When I met my husband Jamshid here in Los Angeles 40 years ago, Eunice and Soraya's love and support was invaluable to me and Jamshid at a time when I was deciding to get married whilst experi experiencing the loss of my own father. This couple stood by us as a second set of parents, and this support never wavered throughout all these years. Eunice's sincerity, kindness, gentleness, generosity of spirit, joyfulness, and joie de vivre continue to be model characteristics I personally aspire to. His memory will certainly be a blessing to all of us who loved him. I would now like to introduce our first speaker, Rabbi David Shofet, Chief Rabbi of Nesach Synagogue and spiritual leader of the Iranian Jewish community of Los Angeles, who was very close to Eunice. Rabbi Shofet. Tovshen <coughs> به ویژه سرایه خانم همسری که همیشه همراه همیار مشوق و دوست نزدیک این زنده یاد بوده و همینطور به فرزندان برومندش داوید عزیز شلامید و همچنین دکتر شارون و از سام عزیز و نبه در اختیار من پنج دقیقه بیشتر نداشتم در این پنج دقیقه خیلی چیزها نمیشه گفت ولی دلم بخواد یک مطلبی که من در طول سالیان متبادی از این زندگیات که همیشه با صورتی شاد و خندان با من صحبت میکرد درباره بسیاری از مسائل یک آیه از 
حضرت شلما میآورم و درک خودم را از اینکه این حماسه به قول خانومم که در راه می اومدی می گفت اون یک استوره بود بله پرویز و یونس نظریان بسیار در جامعه ما ویژه بودند زندگی آنها خدمات آنها شلما می گوید مص... شما بنی مصرفی خوا و التی توش ترتی می خوا و این نشون میده آموزگار واقعی یونس کی بود شلما می گوید فرزندان رهنمودهای پدر و آن چیزی که تو را در زندگی از تجربیات خودش بیاموزد گوش کن گوش بگیر شما انجام دادنم هست و از طرف دیگر روش زندگی رو اخلاق رو از مادرت یاد بگیری چرا که مادر در حقیقت دوران کودکی فرزند با مادر بزرگ میشه شخصیت اولیه هر کودکی در دامن مادر عشق مادر تماس چشمهای مادر شکل میگیره یونس سه ساله از پدر یتیم بنابراین پدری نبود که او را رهنمایی بکنه پدری نبود که او را از تجربیات زندگی خودش بیاموزنه متاسفانه داوود در یک سانحه جانش را دست داد این دو فرزند پرویز و یونس این مادر بود زندیاد گلبهار خانم نشون داد به اونها با سکوتش با دل پر از غمش که چگونه میتوان مسئولیت پذیر بود چگونه میتوان فداکار بود چگونه میتوان برای دیگران مساعدت کرد افتاده رو بلند کرد به دلها امید داد به مسئولیت اگر بخوایم به فارسی ترجمهش بکنیم میشه زمانت تعهد ریسپانسیبلیتی میشه یک کسی که شما را صدا میکنه جوابش بدید ولی در عبری یک لغتی هست این لغت بسیار با معناست یعنی اخریوت اخریوت از اخر میاد اخر یعنی دیگری را دیدن تو زندگی مواظب دیگری بودن برادرت خواهرت افراد جامعه دنیای بزرگتر میبینیم این دیدگاه این فلسفه زندگی رو یونس از مادر آموخته بود و میبینیم وقتی که خداوند به او قدرت داد لطف کرد چگونه هزارها نفر از این مسئولیت و وجدادی در حقیقت از این اخریوت دیگری را دیدن میاد بهره بر بشن و مطمئن هستم مشعلی را که او روشن کرد به دست فرزندانش داده اونها را میشناسن میدونن ادامه دهنده راه او هستند با لطف خداوند و با لطف مادری که همیشه در کنارشان بوده خداوند به همه اونها تسلی ببخشه خداوند به همه اونها عمر طولانی بده که بتونن این مشعل پدر رو همیشه روشن کنند روشن نگه دارند و به فرزندان خود اون رو بسپارند آمین تهی میشباتو سرورا بسر رخاییم خوال دعودیم به دارو میشتخیم این یک بسر است میگه افسوس و افسوس چنین انسانهای بزرگی از بیان ما می و مانندشون پیدا نمی شود. Thank you very much, Rabbi Shofet. Family was paramount in Eunice's life. He treasured his wife openly, which is unusual for Iranian men of his generation. 
He guided and supported his children back in Iran and as the family fled due to the revolution in Iran. Through the hardest times, his focus was foremost on the well-being of his family, which he had so lovingly created with Soraya. Here to share some, some family memories is his eldest daughter, Shulamit Nazarian. On behalf of my family, I'd like to thank you for coming tonight to memorialize and celebrate the life of Dinesh Nazarian. I am sure my father is here with us and very happy to see every one of you with us. My father was the bright light of our family. His motto in life was the pursuit of happiness. By that, I mean everything he pursued was with that intention in mind. Every story Baba told, told us about his childhood had a lesson embedded in it, even though we knew they were very difficult experiences. He managed to tell them in a positive light. Family was the foundation of his happy place. He trusted and loved his mother and brother deeply. He understood the value of family and the strength of it. He loved my mother dearly and trusted her from the beginning to end. He believed and leaned into his partner in life, Soraya, because he knew my mother brought heart and soul to the family and more. A lot of people this week have mentioned his infectious smile and funny jokes because he knew the power of laughter. My father believed that laughter lightens up and heals the soul. Even in the darkest and the most difficult times of his life, he managed to smile and bring smiles to the faces of everyone around him. I remember the heaviness of his face when we left Iran in haste. In Ramad Gan house in Israel, we lived with all my cousins and extended family for a short time. Baba kept our spirits up by teaching us ballroom dancing and told us jokes and played games with us as if everything is okay and under control. In the face of change and transition, he leaned on friends and family he could trust and rely on. He loved his friends dearly because he knew that friends are gifts from God. When we migrated to Los Angeles, his friend Jerry Allard extended a genuine hand to help him to start a new life. Their friendship extended all their life with many shared celebrations and happy occasions. I am sure they're having lots of fun in the heaven and playing backgammon together, telling jokes to each other. They both loved life and were children at heart. By learning to adopt the American values and culture quickly, he was able to work and grow in the community at large and my father cherished the country we lived in and was grateful for all the freedom and opportunities it provided. Yet he loved and kept his Jewish and Iranian heritage and valued and the values intact. When facing difficulties in his relationships, my father was able to forgive in significant and surprising ways. He believed in Shalom Bayit, the meaning of peace at home and in his heart. As well as, uh, as, as we all grew up and carved our paths, 
He knew how to be an amazing and outstanding father, even though he didn't grow to have his own. Baba watched us closely. When we challenged him, he didn't say no, but challenged us back to make sure we knew where we were going. He gave us the support and love we needed to become independent and different. He was proud of us as we were and as we are. Most importantly, he taught us by doing. He was an example to me and my siblings and his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and others who came in touch with him. He was grateful for the opportunities and gifts life had given him, and in return, he understood the importance of giving back. He accepted that as his, respons that as his responsibility. He knew that being in the position to give back is the highest blessing of all. Baba gave generously of his fortune and his time and his spirit to the people, places, causes, and communities he believed in and loved. The last decade of my loved father's life was probably the most difficult of them all. Yet he managed to stay positive. Keep his dignity and value and love the people who took care of him. He brought a smile to their faces when he could and loved and cherished my mother who cared for him selflessly with unending, un, unending love and admiration. The last week of his life, Baba's light started to diminish, but he was peaceful. He knew that his light will forever live in our family, in his friends, in everyone he touched. He will forever live in every one of us who knew him and were touched by his kindness, humanity, generosity, friendship, and love forever and ever. Thank you for these beautiful words, Shola Jun. Thank you. A longtime friend of the Nazarian family, and especially a close friend of Eunice and Sam, I would like to ask Mayor Eric Garcetti to come to the stage. Good evening. First, let me say what happiness it brings to me to see all of you here to honor a great angel in our city of angels and for us to be together after so long apart for so many painful months, indeed years. There's a proverb in Persian, and I'm sure I will be corrected by many friends in this room, but I will try. Kube kunemri rasad, adam be adam mirasad, which translates roughly as mountains don't meet, people do. In other words, what we look out there and see on this earth, its natural beauty can't come together the way human beings do. The way we meet a fellow human being, the way they touch our hearts, and the way together our lives are changed. Sam, when you texted me and told me that your father was no longer of this earth, it felt seismic. It felt like the loss of one of those pillars that this city and this world rests on. A man whose story is the story, of course, of a family, but also the story of a city, the story of a people who have come here, and indeed, the story of a man. As the story of a family, my heart breaks for Soraya, the beloved, beautiful, and talented love of Eunice's life. To Sam and to David and to, of course, Shulamit, and thank you for your beautiful words. And to my dear friend Sharon, to all the grandchildren and the great-grandchild. Your hearts are more broken than any of us. But I want you to know those hearts don't break alone. 
as this city wraps its arms of love around you, each and every one of you today. What I learned in my friendship and knowing Yunus Nazarian were a few lessons I'd like to share. One, he was the model that success doesn't have to come at the expense of others. Second, that toughness need not come without a smile. And that wealth is not your own to hoard, but it is the community's to share. When I think about the impact here in this city of this man, he's changed every single one of us, indeed, those who don't even know him, for the better. In business, he was a builder, literally, building first in Iran and then in Israel and then here, building things physically, but also building things metaphorically, building companies, building jobs, building love around him. We saw it in the family man that he was, and it is said that family is perhaps the greatest reflection of ourselves. When I think about his children and his grandchildren and great-grandchild, they reflect a man who loved family as deeply as any I've ever witnessed. And when it comes to community, perhaps the reason the family so graciously asked me to speak here tonight, whether it was the Ima Foundation or the Nazarian Foundation, anybody who could unite and contribute to UCLA and USC in the same city, as well as CSUN, <laughs> University of Haifa, have honors from Israel and here in the United States of America at the highest level from our national leaders, was indeed a man of peace and a man who brought us all together. I know the Nazarians, and I know how many people know the Nazarians. There's hardly a month that goes by where I don't meet somebody who says, I know Eunice, or I know Sam, or I know Soraya, or I know Sharon. Because the impact of this man and the family that he was a part of and helped lead has put down in marble in this city the changes for the better. We know of many ways that he gave, and many that we don't know because they were quiet. The true meaning of tzedakah, of our obligation as Jews or those non-Jewish friends that are here with us tonight who understand we don't give because it gives us something. We give because it is our sacred obligation commanded by God. So if we can learn one thing, now that Eunice is not on this earth, I hope that it is to give like Eunice, to smile like Eunice, to share like Eunice. He shared with me when I was running for mayor, and we were together at Sam's hotel, and he pulled me aside after an event, and he said, Eric, I'm your unofficial advisor, your campaign manager. So I listened, and I said, well, give me some advice. And he said, Advice that was as powerful as it was simple. He said, you'll win as long as you show people your heart. Show people your heart. Well, there's another expression in Farsi, de la tangam, my heart is tight. It's what we say when we miss something, some time, someone. And I know I speak for everyone in this room tonight, and so many who are not with us, that our hearts are tight. But this is a man whose heart radiated. In fact, it was the old priest of the temple who said one of the greatest sins as Jews would be to worship in a room with no windows. Because to do so would be to contain that divinity inside each one of us that reflects God and not share it with the world. So no matter what bad years we've been through and how many hardships we go through as a people, each one of our sacred spaces always have windows in them. And Eunice was like that, a window whose heart radiated out the divinity that we all have within us and helped us see our own. May his memory be a blessing to this city and to this world.
Amen. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti, for honoring us and for your wonderful words. Life as an Iranian Jew was not easy, whether in Iran or in the diaspora after the revolution. Nevertheless, Yunus and his brother Parviz and their families faced all these difficulties. Yunus and Soraya, despite all the challenges in their way, became leaders in philanthropy in the United States and abroad, particularly in Israel. To highlight some conditions about life in Iran, I would like to invite to the stage Dr. Nahid Oberman of UCLA's Iranian Studies Department. She's also a founding member of the Iranian Women's Organization and a board member of the Habib Levy Foundation. Mrs. Dr. Oberman. Good evening. <clears throat> On behalf of Habib Levy Cultural Foundation, an Iranian Jewish women's organization, and in my role as a faculty member of Iranian studies at UCLA, I express my deepest condolences to Mrs. Soraya Nazarian and the entire Nazarian family. Personally, I would like to express my family's and my own admiration and warmest respect to the memory of our beloved Mr. Yunus Azaria. My personal experience with Yunus, as his friends called him, started at the time he joined the Habib Levy Cultural Foundation as the chairman. His vision and foresight for the policies and goals of the organization completely aligned with those of the late Habib Levy and his family. When I think of Yunus in the, his role of a chairman of the organization, the main characteristics that shine in my mind were his wisdom, Jewish pride, manners, sense of humor, and respect for women. Eunice's birth, date, Eunice's birth date of 1931 parallels with the early period of the emancipation of Iranian Jews from centuries suppression shortly after the establishment of Alliance Israelite schools in Iran in 1898 and the Iranian constitution of 1906, recognizing the Jews as citizens and the uh, formation of the Zionist Association of Tehran and Iran in response to the Balfour Declaration in 1917. By 1931, in Tehran, most Jewish families had already moved out of the ghetto, finding refuge by the residence of the Muslim cleric, uh, <coughs> Sheikh Hadi and Ajmabadi, on the street named after him. The first rays of enlightenment were rising in Tehran and some major cities. Habib Levi, an Iranian Jew, was the dentist of Reza Shah Pahlavi. Jewish scholar Suleiman Haim was uh, compiling the very first English Persian Persian English dictionary. And Mushfaq Hamidani, a Jewish journalist and uh, translator, excuse me, Translator introduced the masterpieces of French literary works for their entire Persian community. During the 1930s and 40s, life was difficult for all Iranians, but darker for Yunus and his brother Parvis due to the death of their father at an early age and their brave mother who raised the two children despite the difficulties. Thus, it was understandable that Yunus and his brother, like other Iranian Jews that were proud Zionists, left for the state of Israel upon its establishment in uh, 1948. 
Yunus and his brother returned to Iran in the early 1950s at the time where Jews had an opportunity to flourish due to the fa de facto recognition of the state of Israel by Iranian government and the symbiotic relation between the two countries. Many Iranian Jews, including Yunus and Parvis, took a vital role in the advancement of Iran of that time. From the 1950s throughout the, mid, uh, throughout the late 1970s, the Nazarian brothers used their experience and knowledge obtained in early Israel to modernize their homeland, Iran, through improvement to infrastructure, such as introducing sewage systems in some cities and irrigational drip system. While Yunus, while you, while Yunus's life <clears throat> in Iran coincided with this period of relative enlightenment, anti-Semitism still continued to exist in the country. The, inf uh, the infamous 1968 Asian Cup soccer tournament held in Tehran is a good example of the hidden anti-Semitism which caused many Iranian Jewish uh, entrepreneurs uh, to leave the country or start investing abroad. Despite these incidents, the Nazarian brothers remained in Iran until it was no longer safe for them and their families as Jews and Zionists. What a great loss for Iran and our fellow Iranians, and what a blessing for the United States and Israel to welcome them with open arms. They came to a land where a ladder was open for them to climb to its highest level with the sky as its limit. This new country, <clears throat> in this new country, Yunus reestablished himself not only as a businessman and a philanthropist, but also a community leader. The list of families' contributions stretches across different areas and national borders. But I especially want to emphasize the value of the Center of Israel Studies at UCLA. I reflect back on the year of, the, of his 70th birthday at a meeting with him and Professor David Myers, the incumbent head of Jewish studies at UCLA, when Professor Myers proposed that Eunice gives himself a birthday present by establishing the Center of Israel Studies. Many years later, this wish was actualized with Eunice's close attention to details in, the, uh, in evaluating every aspect of the Center of Israel Studies using his wisdom and foresight. In my history classes, I, I have often met uh, graduate students coming from Iran asking inquisitively about Zionism. Today, with the demonization of Zionism by the current political regime of Iran, the Center of Israel Studies stands as an objective uh, resource for students and academics to better understand Zionism and the state of Israel. In Pirkei Avot, Wisdom of the Jewish Sages, Rabbi uh, Simon says that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of royalty. But the crown of a good name given to someone by the people in his community is the highest of all. As was witnessed at Eunice's funeral and the crowds paying respect every day in this sanctuary this week, the people of this community have given Eunice the crown of a good name. May God Hearing now some beautiful memories of how they regarded Eunice as a role model are Ariel Torbati and Sarah Bardaran, his eldest grandson and eldest granddaughter.
My dear Baba, as your first grandchild, you and I shared a unique relationship. I remember the first time it hit me when I realized that you were much more than just our Baba. I was 16 years old living in Tel Aviv when together you and I traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate Yom Ha'atzma'ut at the famous church lighting ceremony on Har Herzl. I remember feeling enormous pride as we walked hand in hand speaking with diplomats and important friends whose work was instrumental to the continued success of our great heritage and Zionist dream. Three years later, the State of Israel bestowed upon you this greatest civilian honor. As I stood there watching you that night marked a crystallization within me of your great contribution to the world. But also it shaped the molten foundations within me as I began my personal journey of manhood and life. As you stood proudly on top of that mountain, lighting a torch, you lit a fire within my heart. Waken me to a desire to achieve a life filled with meaning and purpose like you have done. Your, decision, your dedication to all your grandchildren was untethered by love and support, and the fire I felt ignite in my heart on that night to, continues to burn to this day. It was during these formative years that with your wishes, your grandchildren were invited into your boardrooms and made up what is now the junior board of the Eunice and Soraya Nazarian Foundation. Looking around that elegant long conference table, our family sitting together, working together, I know how this gave you the greatest satisfaction of all. During these meetings, you and Momsi planted roots and actively included us in the story of your legacy and your fervorous generosity. The foundation you and Momsi created became the institutional backbone and lasting embodiment of your legacy. Both your shared values have inspired our generation to keep the torch lit, kindle the flame, and pass on to the generations that will be created from your blood and memory. Your character forged the deepest impact within me, helping me to understand what it means to be a man and what it means to be a Nazarian man. Do you know what that means, you would say? Ariely, what does that mean to you? You challenged us all to take a deep look in the mirror and to fight to create that best version of ourselves, bound by love, dedication, and principle. Life was your greatest teacher, and I promise you that we will never forget and we will never stop living through the lessons and stories you have taught us from your experiences and example. You showed me how to be a devoted husband and father, you taught me how to manifest and not be afraid of hard work or perseverance. You lit up my world through music and art. You embodied how to be strong and empathic. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love you have given us, the lessons you have taught us, your echoing laughter which reverberates in my heart your fire continues burning bright until one day we will meet again and I will sing do re mi and you will reply fa so la ti. first mental image I have when I think of my grandfather, our Baba Jun, is of him enjoying breakfast. Anyone who is lucky enough to have known Baba well knows that the early morning was his time of day. And he loved starting his day with his partner of 61 years, our Mumsy. For 11 years, my brother, sister, and I lived next door to Mumsy and Baba. We shared so much, 
including a private pathway connecting our two homes. We had a front row seat to the love they shared for each other. Mumsy made Bubba's plate as he got older, and Bubba always saved a special bite of fruit for Mumsy before breakfast was finished. Mumsy was the love of Bubba's life. Mumsy and Bubba loved dancing the waltz, and in many ways, their relationship was like a dance that required a constant sway, a constant back and forth of energy, love, support, and respect. When I was a child, I asked Mumsy why she always made a plate of food for Baba at larger occasions, to which she replied, I got engaged at 15 years old. The love and support he gave me as a young wife and mother was unconditional. Now it's my turn. The two of them shared so much together, meeting and falling in love in Iran, leaving everything behind for Israel and then the United States. They had to start their lives over twice together in a span of two years. And once they made it to America, they learned that their wedding anniversary fell on February 14th, on Valentine's Day. And Baba was so romantic. I sometimes wonder if he had secretly planned on marrying her on the 25th of Bahman 61 years ago, just so it would land on the International Day of Love. When they spent time in Israel, Mumsy and Baba shared long walks on the Tel Baruch beach. After their special time together, my mom, brother, sister, and I would then meet them at our favorite local breakfast cafe. Mumsy and Baba would share breakfast as they did every morning. These are my most cherished memories. Our Mumsy and Baba enjoying the salty air, the sound of the waves, and each other. When I think of the time I got to share with them, both here in Los Angeles, Israel, and everywhere in between, I realize that our Baba June loved the simple things in life. He loved sharing quiet moments with his life partner, and he loved saving a little surprise for her. I'd like to finish by quoting a British artist the grief that will remain with us is all the unexpressed love because we never get enough time with each other. And I hope this grief stays with me because it's all the unexpressed love that I didn't get to tell him. And I told him, we all told him until the end. I think we can all feel the love for Eunice to today. And uh, Ariel and Sarah, thank you for speaking so beautifully. Um, Eunice's life was rich in experience and memories. The family has put together a short video documentary about this wonderful life, which they gathered from the Nazarian family ar archives. Uh, please uh, direct your attention to the wall and join us in watching this video. May I ask you to dim the lights, please? Thank you. Nazarian, a name etched on buildings, found on numerous boards of directors, and synonymous with success. Always, I say to my grandchildren, you want to have a good day. The impact they have had has truly been felt around the world. When you're honest, when you respect others, you support, you help, 
without any condition, and they respect you people. He's a man who builds fortunes from hard work and integrity. Probably one of the most hardworking people that I've met. Whose fearless ambition helped him rise up from poverty to become a captain of industry, never afraid to take a risk. I cannot call risk because that's the only way we had to do it. His achievements are many, a name associated with triumph. Eunice Nazarian's story is unique. As a Persian Jew, he broke through many barriers. His visionary outlook on life led him to become a working class hero whose hard earned success was born out of a never say die spirit. It was his bold vision that saw the family through troubled times, through revolutions, losses, and daunting times of uncertainty. In how my father talks about it, and that I think affected him in his future, you know, growth and understanding, is that how you capture and get over your fears, and how fears could hold you back or coming um, overcoming it can allow you to grow. That spirit was formed in a South Tehran ghetto where his single mother, known as Ima, worked hard to raise her two boys. Vicious anti-Semitism was status quo, and Eunice had much to overcome. He lost his father when he was two years old and raised in a very, very poor family, but he was always optimistic. Always he was someone that believed that tomorrow is better than today. In 1949, he made his way to Israel, pretending to be an Iraqi refugee. He was smuggled out of Iran only a year after the state of Israel was born. He joined his brother in carving out a new life. The immigrants arriving today come from different parts of the world. Many of them are young, and all of them share the belief that by working together, they can make Israel into a strong nation. He credits joining the army where he served as a border police officer for adding to his solid foundation in life. He's a very good teacher for me. As much as the brothers loved Israel, both Yunus and Parvis saw newfound opportunities in Iran and set out to return to their country of birth to build multiple businesses. It was here he was to meet his future bride, Soraya. The big success I have after returning from Iran is the four children and a very lovely wife. He was very different than the, among the Iranian uh, guys in, the, in Iran. More respectable and uh, open-minded and he looks very much the ideal and good person for me. I was thinking that it was very different and very uh, kind of the person that I can enjoy to share my life with him. With the stability he achieved through hard-earned financial success, Eunice now had everything he dreamed of, a family of his own, a life built with Soraya. As the Nazarian name became synonymous with success, fate would once again intervene. The Islamic Revolution toppled the Shah and brought Ayatollah Khomeini to power in 1979. The tensions leading up to a revolution in Iran resulted in losing nearly everything they'd built, as the Nazarian family sought refuge first in Israel and then in America. From poverty and persecution to salvation found in two countries, Israel and America, to a name he built that's now synonymous with success. Eunice Nazarian says his greatest joy now, sharing his success. Very quickly became very clear to me that this really, in a way, is the chapter that he cares the most about. This is what he chose to leave behind, the legacy. Um, and the character came through there too. It's as we all know, very rare for men who come from abject poverty, not having a father, having really a difficult life story, to reach a point where they're li in their lives where they feel that their generosity is really their legacy. Ever the builder, libraries and dance centers have been created. Their generosity to the underprivileged is renowned and millions in grants have been given. 
dear Mr. and Mrs. Nazaria. Your special focus on libraries is a clear statement of your desire to promote wisdom. So important when you donate unconditionally and you make other people happy, make you happy. So everything he does in Israel for the thousands of students who receive scholarships from us, from all the after-school programs that we've supported in, in uh, needy neighborhoods, all the libraries that we've built, he understands that that's not touching one life or two lives. It's really touching thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. These honors have earned Nazarian honorary doctorates from the University of Haifa and Cal State University, Northridge. In recognition of Mr. Nazarian's outstanding work to advance the arts and education, the Board of Trustees of the California State University and California State University, Northridge, are proud to confer upon Mr. Nazarian the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. His stature is further recognized with a seat on multiple board of directors globally. A humble man by nature, Eunice concedes that he takes great pride in two honors in particular. Among them, an invitation to the Israel torchlighting ceremony in Neset. Eunice was among 12 recipients invited to stand atop Mount Herzl in Jerusalem in 2009 to honor the solemn day of remembrance for Israelis fallen, a particularly memorable and rare honor for a non-Israeli native, an honor that speaks volumes to his commitment to the state of Israel. And just two years later, in 2011, Eunice was awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor, among the nation's most prestigious awards. His legacy of making sure that all of us, we work hard, have a good name and making sure that you share your blessing with others. The depth of the love that this family has for, for one another, for the community, for friends, for extended family, for Israel, it's an unconditional love and, and, and you feel that immediately when you walk through the doors. The sense of responsibility that he had towards his mother, towards his brother, towards his nation is is something that I admire so much, that at a very young age, everything that you did was, uh, was had meaning. It, you really dedicated your life towards building a family, supporting your family, and supporting uh, Israel. Being raised the way he was raised and having nothing to where we are today, and you have to swim for the fences sometimes. Uh, so I think that's, that's what ultimately um, allows you to grow as a human being and it's not just in business it's in philanthropy whether it's in your community whether it's part of the political aspect um, you have to dream big and that's something he always uh, instilled in all of us How can you not smile after seeing that smile? Truly, this is a celebration of Eunice's life tonight. I'd like to introduce a very close friend of Eunice and Soraya, Mr. Richard Sandler, past national chair of the Jewish Federations of North America and past chair of the Los Angeles Jewish Federation. What a wonderful tribute to a giant of a man. Let me start by first thanking the Nazarian family by honoring me by allowing me to be part of this wonderful tribute to Eunice Nazarian. Since our community lost our dear friend Eunice Nazarian last Friday, it's not surprising that we have all read and heard a number of eulogies, many from organizations who talked about how much Eunice meant to them. Rabbi Wolpe captured Eunice so well 
at the funeral service last Sunday when he described Eunice as someone with a magnetic personality, yet one who never exhibited any feeling of his own self-importance, despite his incredible success. Someone who projected authentic warmth, a strong intellect, and boundless generosity. Through both the Eunice and Soraya Nazarian Family Foundation here in the United States and the Ima Foundation in Israel, Eunice and Soraya have supported so many causes with a major focus on Israel, Jewish education, culture, and the arts. When I was privileged to chair the Los Angeles Jewish Federation some 13 years ago, it became clear to me as we sat to try to identify the most important issues that affected the Jewish community at that time, that we needed to understand better the Iranian Jewish community and the relationship between that community and the greater Jewish community. After all, we are all one people. We are a small minority of the general population and whatever our differences are or were, we have so much more in common. It was time to start to build bridges between the two communities. When I acquired about who is the best leader, the best member of the Iranian Jewish community to work with to build these bridges, of course, I was introduced to Eunice Nazarian. I immediately found in Eunice not only a dear friend but a kindred spirit someone committed to Torah values, to Jewish learning, and to Israel. He understood the importance of culture, and he also understood the Jewish value of mutual respect. He was someone that I could learn from as we tried to build bridges together. Eunice not only taught me about the richness and the importance of the Iranian Jewish culture, he expressed a sincere desire to me to learn more about the greater Jewish community and about the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles, how we could build bridges together with respect for both communities. After all, we all know to the outside world, there's just a Jewish community. Together with his talented daughter, Sharon, who was at that time running the Family Foundation, we began a process, a process that forever changed the relationship between the Iranian Jewish community, the Jewish Federation, and the Nazarian family. The Nazarian family became leaders and significant supporters in both communities. We may still have work to do, but Eunice set the tone and the example for all of us to follow. The greatest reward one gets when devoting time to the Jewish community is the opportunity to meet remarkable people, people who share your same commitment and the chance to develop meaningful relationships with those individuals. It is really hard for me to express to you and to Soroya and the family how blessed my wife Ellen and I have been to have become lifelong friends of Eunice, Soroya, and the entire Nazarian family. It is a friendship we cherish, a friendship built upon respect and love. I will miss Eunice. I will miss that wonderful smile that lights up the room, that warm embrace when he grabs your hand and makes you feel like you're the most important person in his world. How blessed we all are to still have Soroya in our lives. After all, as Sarah so beautifully said, and as Shula made so clear, there would be no Eunice without a Soroya. And how blessed we are that Eunice will continue to live in all of our lives, not only through Soroya, but through his incredible children, Sharon, David, Shula, and Sam and their spouses and partners, Fernando, Angela, Emina, and Matt. I so believe that the Torah commands us to live a most meaningful life 
by using whatever talents Hashem has given us while we are on this earth to make the earth a better place, to work as Hashem's messengers and partners in making the world better. Eunice Nazarian lived such a life. The world is a much better place because Eunice was in it. And I'm a much better person because he was in my life. May his memory be for a blessing as he was a blessing to all of us. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Eunice and Soraya did not only support their own family, Jewish community, and Israel. Their love and philanthropy extended to those outside of their community and all of humanity. With their generous contributions to CSUN and naming its Performing Arts Center, they sought to support immigrant students, many of whom were the first in their families to attend college. Having been immigrants themselves once, this was very meaningful for them. Here now is Thor Steingraber, Executive Director of the Eunice and Soraya Center for the Performing Arts, the Soraya, as it's commonly known, located at the, the California State University in Northridge. An inextinguishable ember. The words first came to me last week when I learned of our collective loss. And now I'm privileged to stand here for a moment to discern fully the meaning of those words. No doubt born from the spirit of Eunice Nazarian, inspired by his generosity, and in particular, the lasting impact he made and will forever make through his philanthropy. I offer this reflection to the family and to everyone assembled on behalf of California State University Northridge, where the Performing Arts Center that bears his name is located, the Soraya as we know it. But I'm confident my words also reflect the other arts and culture and educational institutions here and around the world touched by the Nazarian family. I'm only able to speak to one chapter, a mere six years in the vast span of Eunice Nazarian's life. However, those years are no doubt the result of the many that precede it, because philanthropy like his does not happen overnight. It's the result of a lifetime's success, the cultivation of a mindset and a worldview, and to no small degree, to hardships overcome. It is also evidenced by the way his values are imparted to his family, that the world as it is, and more so the world as we would have it, is inexorably linked to our humanity, invention, and beauty that take root when we educate, edify, and uplift communities. And as such, I hope these comments illuminate a life lived, a legacy left, reflecting the past and even portending the future of Eunice Nazarian's vast influence. When first contemplating the proposition of funding the Performing Arts Center at CSUN, the Nazarians initiated many conversations, part negotiation and part even interrogation. At our final meeting, the family and I met on the stage of the then Valley Performing Arts Center, looking out on an empty auditorium. Mr. Nazarian was surrounded by his family, listening intently, and he reserved the last question for himself. Why would my friends on the other side of the hill come to Northridge for a performance? Every day I, I contend with a question like this. Why cross Mulholland? Why even cross Ventura Boulevard? Uh, why drive 10 miles north when you could drive 10 miles east on the 10? And even Valley residents, why leave the donut and descend into the donut hole? In Los Angeles, our lives are shaped by geography. And many regard Northridge as a faraway outpost. And not just because it's 10 degrees warmer, even a desert. This despite the outsized impact that CSUN has on the, as the intellectual, cultural, and economic hub for 1.8 million people in the San Fernando Valley. So Mr. Nazarian's question was not unfamiliar to me, and I said, 
Mr. Nazarian, this venue wasn't built for them. It was built for the people here, the students, the communities, the residents of the valley. Your friends are welcome, but they have venues on the other side of the hill, and we had none. My relationship with Mr. Nazarian may have ended in that moment, but my reply was met with that smile that we just saw. I had taken a chance that Mr. Nazarian, above all, understood distance, dis distances journeyed for opportunity, even to the desert. That impact and need know no geography. And that an outpost to some is an oasis to others. And that communities and families deserve to be served in their neighborhoods near their homes. In this regard, amongst others, Mr. Nazarian was selfless, and we prevailed. Later, upon renaming the Performing Arts Center, I stood on the stage with Eunice, Soraya, and daughter Sharon, and addressed an audience replete with a guest list that evidenced the admiration for the family and the importance of their gift to CSUN. And Sharon started, she said, we are a family of immigrants. This was a clear-headed, proud, and personal conveyance on behalf of her siblings, mother, and father. But frankly, one that's not typical in posh moments like this. But the words didn't surprise me. They were the full-throated invocation of our shared mission. In our many conversations leading up to their gift, we'd spoken extensively about the communities that surround and frequent our performance center the diversity on stage that reflects the diversity of the region, our commitment to artists working in social justice, the popularity of our Spanish language programs, and the educational opportunity provided by CSUN to so many first-generation students. We are a family of immigrants, signified the full extent to which the Nazarian family would partner in bringing the arts to all people of the San Fernando Valley and yes, even a few from the other side of the hill. We often refer to philanthropy as giving, and therefore those of us in arts and culture and educational institutions as the receivers. And giving and receiving alike, I can attest, are motivated variously and are often transactional in nature. Not so for Eunice Nazarian. His giving is a commitment and an investment in values, in impact, in community, in leaders, and in partnership. Eunice Nazarian's giving is intended to initiate an ever-advancing cycle of transformation, to perpetuate impact, to facilitate further giving, philanthropic and otherwise, and to meet need where it is greatest. That is the flame that will not fade, and one that will certainly fuel future generations. In fact, Last year, in a regular meeting I had with Sharon Nazarian, she invited her son Adam to join. And she said, one day the next generation will carry this torch. In many ways, Eunice Nazarian is an inextinguishable ember and a blessing to us all. Thank you, Thor. The next speaker is very dear to me. <laughs> when Jamshid and I married a lifetime ago, David, Eunice's eldest son, met his wife, Angela, who is Jamshid's sister. The marriage of the two wove our families even closer together. Having taken the position of an elder in my family, the Shauli family, and treating me as his daughter, he always joked with the Madahi side of the family and said, we gave you one Angela, and we took another Angela from you. Ye Angela betun dadim, ye Angela gereftim. Now, here is the other Angela.
Good evening. I'm going to bring this in. It isn't easy to honor and fully encapsulate the personality of such an important man, one of the biggest role models in my life. I was a young bride of 20 when he held me before going under the chuppah, and he leaned into me and he whispered, Arus, from now on you'll be my daughter. So it was said, and that is exactly what followed. So I called him Baba, like the other children, and loved him as a father. When my father passed away, when I was 33 years old, Baba filled in lots of the empty spaces that were in my heart with his love and kindness. It is remarkable how life twists and turns, but after 33 years of knowing Baba as well, we said our goodbyes. How lucky I was to know him. How could I even describe this giant of a man that he was. He was witty. He was unpretentious, more interested in others than himself, beloved by his many friends, colleagues, family, and of course, a man full of integrity with a core of resilience. And underneath that resilient core was a layer of real kindness an unreal charm. I learned so much from him, and the best way I can honor him is to talk about the real values that he lived by and what he wanted to show to his family through his actions. He was a successful visionary entrepreneur and took pride in his achievements. But when you take in the full life story of this man, you see that at the very core of his life, his real mission was to feel the presence of love inside him and around him. He was an exceptionally generous man, and this was the way he was giving love to others. He was generous with his time. He was generous with his attention and compliments and uplifted the mood in a gathering or party with his many jokes his laughter, and his natural inclination towards joy. Early on, David and the other siblings would tell me how as a young dad, he would spend the entire Friday with them wrestling, taking them horseback riding every weekend, and spending time with them. And I always thought, what a remarkable man he was because of the man of that generation to be that engaged with his kids. I first met David and I asked him who his, first, who, who his best friend was. And without missing a beat, he told me, it's my father. When I was newly married and still going to graduate school, he would proudly introduce me to his important colleagues and talk about my line of study. He made sure each person was seen and appreciated. With each child, he nurtured a special relationship. With each friend, he created a special bond. With each grandchild, he had his own way of connecting with them. And of course, the adorable ways he would flirt with his bride, Soraya. Both of them well-practiced at ballroom dancing. When the two of them would go on the dance floor, I couldn't take my eyes off them. It was their elegance, their synchronized movements that blew me away. That was how they were. They danced throughout life together. He would sing to her, fill the house with music and song. And then the longest running joke was that he would ask her almost every week, Sorry, Jun, I love you. In another lifetime, would you still marry me? Week after week we would watch the two of them do their dance. 
still courting each other. He was so generous with his expression of love. You would think that many people who grew up in, with little resources, I must say, would have an inner sense of scarcity, or at least would have some sort of complex relationship with money. To me, he defied every expe expectation and all the training I had in psychology. Eunice felt so rooted, had such a big sense of inner worth that he didn't need any show for ostentation. True humility is indeed part of true greatness as well. His priorities were one in which he enjoyed the finer things in life, and he was blessed to have that around him, but never felt too attached to it either. He showed us through example to focus on attention and to love things that could actually love us back. That meant people and relationships and of course the various animals he loved to have around the house, from parrots to parakeets to dogs, horses, and his favorite prized koi fish that he would feed every morning. A couple of years ago, he went around the table asking everyone's, what everyone's hobby was. One grandchild said, it's basketball. He said, that's not a hobby, that's a sport. Another one said reading. He said, no, that's not a hobby. I said, it's dancing. Thank God he liked dancing, so he was a little lenient on me. <laughs> then we just turned to him and said, so if none of these are real hobbies, what is your hobby, Belba? He paused and he said, my hobby is feeding my fish. My fish swim toward me in the moment they see me and tell me something. Do any of your hobbies love you back the way my fish do? <laughs> well, needless to say, he won that argument. Then there was a time that he surprised Soraya by saying that he has bought a horse. For days, Soraya kept tossing and turning and wondering how she could take care of a horse in their house. <laughs> when the horse arrived, she was shocked to see a life-size horse being carried in the arms of a delivery person. She broke out in laughter because this horse that looked like the spitting of the image of a live horse was in fact made out of plastic. Now with all the gorgeous sculptures and bronzes in their house, they had this live looking horse that would shock visitors when they would drive into the driveway. <laughs> Not to disappoint Baba, <laughs> Soraya left it there for a long time. Then slowly she moved it one level lower to the other side of the garden. A few months later, it went on to the tennis court. By the end of the year, it was facing the <laughs> back fence facing Sunset Boulevard. And if you ever drive on Sunset Boulevard and you look up, there's a face of a head of a horse that's peeking out through the foliage, and I always say hi. <laughs> Eunice, and I must add, Soraya's generosity took a more public form three decades ago. Convinced that they are blessed with having whatever they need, Eunice and Soraya spend the second half of their life giving back to others. But their vision of their generosity and philanthropy was bold and rarely seen in immigrant communities. They funded thousands of scholarships, created after-school programs for kids, helped single moms, set up libraries, funded cultural centers and hospitals, and the list just goes on. They have been major contributors to well over 100 nonprofits. Being grateful was also Eunice's practice of sending love to the universe. When there were challenges and he could sense the tone of unease or anxiety in the room, Eunice would redirect the conversation by talking about how lucky and privileged we all were. Do you know how blessed we are? Do you know how lucky we are with these opportunities at our disposal? He would say to us over Shabbat dinners. 
This sense of grace emanated from him in the most uncommon situations. One thing that has become clearer to me, and that is there's no such thing as a dying person. As long as they're alive, as long as they have a sense about them, they truly display who they always have been, even more so any time else, because the force of personality falls to the wayside, and they're there raw and unedited. I would, often, I would often wonder how a man who was so full of vitality and in command of himself was dealing with the decline of his health and aging. We sometimes talk about this together, and truthfully, it wasn't easy sometimes. As everyone knows, there were many times that his health seemed precarious, that he went into the hospital, and we would wonder if he would make it back home, even at those most vulnerable self, in the hospital or in the doctor's office, he would manage to smile and thank the nurses and doctors for their care. One moment stands out for me. Two years ago, he was recovering in the intensive care unit and we all took turns watching over him, waiting for a sign to see what would be next. A nurse came in to check on him, and we were all overjoyed that he had opened his eyes. The first sentence, the first sentence that came out of him was, when I come out of the hospital, I would like to take the nurses and doctors out to dinner to the best restaurant in town, which is, by the way, usually Katsuya. I always found these gestures so profoundly moving, so beautiful, that he was ever present for the exchange of gratitude, the exchange of good energy, and to give back somehow, even in those private moments. One of the gra greatest lessons that he taught me was that forgiveness is a way of giving love to yourself. There were instances in his life that he may have been disappointed. That is natural part of anyone's life. But with Eunice, it was his true nature that he was always willing and wanting to forgive, to share and give, to show a friendly gesture, repair the wound, make good the bad, letting the past go and heal separations. To me, that is the greatness of a person, the courage to overcome obstacles and the genuine willingness to move to a higher level of love when it's not easy to do so. In his own words he, that he used to iterate many times over the dinner table to all of us, by holding resentments, we're not punishing others but punishing ourselves. By choosing to be loving, we are the ones to gain. This is the payoff. Above all, he wanted peace and happiness. Shalom bayit in his home and his, in his relationships. And he showed it by letting go of negativity, accepting people's humanness, and let loving feelings in his heart. All throughout his life, he was the anchor for his beloved wife as well. Their love and devotion to one another was absolute. He was the handsome young man, full of ambi ambition and adventure, that tucked his young bride of 16 under his arms and gave a sense of safety and protection to her and their growing family as they traversed the seismic changes in their lives, their sudden move from Iran to Israel and to the States. With any change, he made sure his family looked forward to each step with hope and faith and a sense of wonder. That was the power Eunice had. Now, in his final years, we saw that deep love and devotion between husband and wife fully realized. It was Soraya's turn to tuck him under her arms, protect him, from a world he used to dominate. She didn't stop at anything to make him happy and comfortable. Baba loved to celebrate his birthdays and would often talk about what he would want to do or 
actually more like what Soraya had to do for him for his birthdays, months in advance. Every year was a celebration. In January, Soraya arranged for his 91st birthday. There was music and laughter, love and intimacy all around. And he had his cake, and while he was blowing out his cake, I have the most beautiful video of the two of them holding each other with such ten tenderness and love. Thank you, Mom Zijun. The whole family thanks you for the love and care. We know everything you did came so naturally from the bottom of your heart. This past week, when Eunice's health <coughs> began to decline once again, and the river of the infinite was entering the space and was taking, away, taking him away from us, Again, I was bearing witness to the great love present in the room, such tenderness amongst the kids, the grandkids, the new girls in the family, and Soraya and Baba. What a true gift, a real and beautiful lesson we had this week, that a life well lived, a life full of love, ripples through the hearts of so many. David, Shula, Matt, Sharon, Fernando, Sam, and Amina, and all the grandchildren and spouses and fiancés, Baba could not have been a more fulfilled and happier man. He felt so settled and happy to see everyone thriving in their own life, and your outpouring of love was so incredible to watch. As Baba was a man so full of joy, he was ever so happy to see all the good Simchas in our family this year, from the birth of his 11th grandchild, Sam and Amina's son, Shaw, to the birth of his first great-grandchild, Ariel and Lana's son, Lev, to the engagement of two of mine and David's two sons, Philip and Eli, to their beautiful fiancés, Jolene and Serena. Always go towards joy. Fill your hearts with song and laughter. That is what he said. And that is what will be done. So as a family, we will honor him and his memory by celebrating all the momentous life events as he would have wanted us to do. May his legacy be a guidepost to the generations to come. May we always, always celebrate him Keep him close to our hearts each and every day. Thank you. Angela said, celebrate with song. And that's what we're going to do now. We have next a short cantorial performance. Um, as, as many of you know, and Angela said, Eunice was a great lover of music. And this uh, next tribute is a testament to his continued love and support for all kinds of music and the arts. This performance tonight re reflects Yunus' profound love and commitment to his Iranian and Jewish roots and to the ce celebration of these beautiful cultures. The family would like to thank all the participants who I'm going to call up now, one by one, Chloe Pormorati, Chloe is a frequent uh, performer here when we have Shabbat Live. She is a, uh, a singer and a composer. Uh, we have uh, Tanaz Bahramand, who is, used to be a cantor here at Sinai Temple, cantor Tanaz Fuz Bahramand Fuzampur. We have Lisa Picot, cantor Lisa Picot, who also used to be a cantor at Sinai Temple. We have cantor Jackie Raffi. We have cantor Marcus Feldman, current cantor of Sinai Temple, and Ariel Cohen as will accompany um, uh, our Sinai Temple's organist and choir director. 
Um, I just wanted to say that we are, all, we are proud that we have young Jewish talent and young Persian Jewish talent um, who will now honor uh, Eunice's memory. Good evening. We're here to open your hearts. We're here to bring comfort and warmth to your hearts. And as Angela said so beautifully, to fill your hearts with song. So I'll sing for you a song combining the text of Yedid Nefesh and beautiful poetry of Rumi, which is all about my soulmate, my loving companion. And Rumi is all about the relationship between the lover and the beloved, the beloved. So let's just imagine for a moment that his, his beloved presence is here with us right now, enlaced, entwined in our melodies and in our songs. Yedid nefesh avarachama Meshoch avdecha el retzonecha Yedid nefesh avarachaman Yedid yari mast Tanhoy tanho Bonarges Barsar Ranovo Rano Josam Yek Buse Gui Azlab Hosh Josam Yek Buse Gui Azlab Hosh Barover, Yakma, Yakma, Faryot, Barover, Yakma, Yakma, Hadur, Naziva, Ola, Hadur, Naziva, she called a vatra, called a vatra. Now she called a vatra. Hadur nae ziva ola. Hadur nae ziva در جای تو جانیست به جز آن جان را در کوه تو کانیست به جوان کان را دیدم در خوابی ساغی زیبا را دیدم در خوابی ساغی زیبارا بر دست گرفته ساغر سهبارا بر دست گرفته ساغر سهبارا
poetry of Psalm 23, attributed to King David, reminds us that in life or in death, in times of plenty or in want, that God is good and worthy of our trust. The psalm uses the metaphor of a shepherd's care for his sheep to describe the wisdom, strength, and kindness of God, even in times of sadness and turmoil. A reminder for us all that in times of brokenness, that we are never alone and that we will again be made whole. Adonai roi, lo exai, i lote sheri arbitze. difficult for me to be here after I have sang at your joyous occasions. Psalm 121 is another commonly recited psalm in times of loss. I hope its words of faith in God will comfort you as well.
Hashki Venu is a part of our evening prayer, and it speaks of the comfort we seek under God's sheltering wings. And I wish this comfort, this peace, this healing to Younes's family as they remember him and his beautiful legacy. As part of a project to preserve Persian Jewish prayer melodies, I arranged a Hashki Venu with a classic Iranian melody that many of you are probably familiar with, Morga Sahar which was composed by Morteza Nedavud, a giant among musicians who also happened to be a Persian Jew. So here is Hashki Venu to the melody of Morga Sahar, and I invite you to sing along with me as you uh, recall this melody. And I want to thank Chloe for joining me on violin, and of course, Ariel on piano. Sukai. 
When we drive down Wilshire Boulevard, we look at the corner of our building and we see the beautiful Torah with the hands holding onto the Torah. And right below that, we see two very important words, ledor vador, from generation to generation. Words that are prayed every day, three times a day. And also, not just a prayer, but a declaration. Saying that from generation to generation, we will be one community. We are connected to those who came before us. And thanks to people like Eunice, we are connected to those who will come after us, knowing that our tradition will live on forever and ever. Le Dor Vador.
So. And we'll conclude our brief musical program with gratitude for being able to celebrate a life well lived and to pray for peace, peace among us, among our family, our community, and God willing, the world as well. Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom in Roma. Ose Shalom Ale. Shalom, shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom. Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, the Alcohol Israel, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu. Thank you to all our performers on coming on such short notice, participating, and uh, beautifying our service with music tonight. And as we say, sang La Dor Vador, here you the door, the new door, the new generation of the Nazarian family, uh, Sam Nazarian, Eunice's son. With his keen eye of commerce and his unparalleled work ethic, Eunice built a business empire in his native Iran, and subsequently his adopted home in the United States. For all of his professional success, Eunice was defined his dedication to his family, improving the lives of others, and love for Haaretz Israel. The, word, the world benef benefited greatly from Eunice's generosity and the contributions of the Eunice and Sarai Nazarian Foundation. And it will be felt in Israel, Southern California, and the Jewish communities far and wide for generations to come. Eunice was especially committed to galvanizing support for Israel among his community. And I'm well aware of Eunice's personal leadership in creating a deep and meaningful connection between the Jewish state and the diaspora communities. Your husband, father, grandfather truly was a blessing to his family, his community, to the Jewish people. I mourn your loss and celebrate the extraordinary life of a remarkable person as Eunice. In friendship, Isaac Herzog, President of the State of Israel. <clears throat> a successful man, author unknown. That man is a success, who has lived well, laughed often, and loved much, who has gained the respect of intelligent men and the love of children, and accomplished his task, who leaves the world better than he found it, who has never lacked appreciation of Earth's beauty or failed to express it, who looked for the best in others and gave the best he had.
<clears throat> As some of you may know, my father passed away on the morning of Friday, March 18th. To know my father like I do, you know he picked this particular Friday morning on March 18th to leave us. During the past five to, and five to six years of my father's life had involved him being in and out of many hospitals and emergency rooms. It seems every time we took him in for a serious bout of pneumonia or major infection or something that seems scary to us, the amazing doc doctors, down to the last one, We're never very optimistic he would be much, would be with us much longer. But every time, like only my father can, with the unbelievable support and strength of my mother, he proved them all wrong. By not only recovering, but recovering in many cases better than when he went into the hospital. To know my father, you know that everything his amazing and improbable life was always around a plan and a strategy. And only he knew five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, that he wasn't ready to leave us. He hadn't seen and done all the things that were left for him to do. Whether it was being alongside his beautiful wife and to celebrate his 64th anniversary, whether it was having many more birthdays where he could still, where we could all love and celebrate him, whether it was finally seeing my son Shah Yosef come into the world that he had dreamed often so often after having two beautiful girls, my amazing wife and I were so proud to be able to share that mitzvah with him and name our son Yosef after him or see his first great grandchild, Lev, be born to his oldest grandchild, Ariel, and his lovely wife, Lana, just a few weeks after. And so many, so many other celebrations in between. He wasn't done, he wasn't ready. <clears throat> on Thursday morning, a week after he passed, a week before he passed, I was in New York when my brother David called me. He said, please come back. Dad isn't feeling well. Those dreaded words were the words I had played in my head for many years as I traveled the world for my work and I feared I would inevitably hear one day. We just didn't know at the time how long I had to get back across the country and be with him. His doctors had said again to us before I took off that we don't anticipate he'd be with, with us much longer. But as only my father can, his ultimate plan became reality. Not only was I able to come home and be with him, but he gave my whole family time to come from literally around the world. My wife from Miami, my nieces Sarah and Leila from New York City, my nephew Adam from Madrid, my sister's partner, Matt, from San Francisco, to be with him and, more importantly, with each other. We spent the whole week surrounding him in our circle of love, led by my mother, Soraya, and my sister, Shula and Sharon. We sang with him his favorite Jewish songs. We all had multiple opportunities to say our deepest and private thoughts, our deepest thoughts to him privately, and we were with and we were there with the magical time he granted us. He knew all of his life work and his true mission was not only ac accomplished, but in front of him, around him, and with him. To understand the importance of Friday, March 18th, you also have to understand that like all of us here tonight, like any family with so many children and their spouses, grandchildren and their spouses, even great-grandchildren, there is inevitably moments when at least one or two family members that are going through challenges of normal life, a special time where they would need a little extra love and attention, which is where my father would always shine the most. Being there for each one of us through those times, supporting us, loving us, giving us the comfort and the confidence to move on and move forward. Like any family around the world that relies and needs the support of their patriarch, their love and their words of encouragement that he would give us year in and year out throughout our lives. But on Friday, March 18th, our family was blessed to be at a moment in time that all of our family members, my mother, my siblings, their spouses, all of my nephews and nieces, my wife, my children, were experiencing a moment in time that thankfully we were all healthy, happy, 
and truly pro prospering. A moment where he knew that all his hard work alongside his partner Soraya had paid off. He knew that this was his moment. As he would always tell us that he dreamed when the time was right, he could rest his head on the pillow and rest in peace knowing his family he loved so much was secure, happy, and healthy. My father picked this beautiful sunny Friday morning, March 18th, knowing that it was the morning of Shabbat. In our Jewish tradition, we wouldn't be able to mourn him for at least 24 hours. We wouldn't be able to host our friends and extended family to mourn with us at home and to just be around each other. Peacefully together before the un unbelievable community would come to visit us as my mother and siblings and I cherished. My father also knew that Friday, March 18th, based on our Jewish beliefs, would mean that we would return him to the soil within 48 hours. And he knew that day was the, would be the one of the most symbolic days of the calendar year for all of us. A day of rebirth, a day of celebration, a day of optimism for the coming year, the first day of spring, the day of Nowruz, our Persian New Year. <clears throat> to know my father, you have to know he wanted us to have enough time to grieve, as instructed by our Jewish law, and then quickly turn our energy without any encumbrance to the upcoming celebration and mitzvahs of the two of, two of the most amazing anticipated milestones that he was so happy were soon happening. The two weddings of my brother, David, and Angela's sons, Eli and Philip, who had planned months in advance to marry <clears throat> their beautiful brides in May and September of this year. I know he wanted us all, after a religious tradition of mourning, that we would be 100% joyous, 100% thankful, and 100% happy to see these beautiful occasions that celebrated these two beautiful grandsons that he loved and adored so much, along with their beautiful brides that he not only was able to meet, but also fall in love with and welcome to our family. And ultimately, to know my father, you have to know it wasn't just through his amazing jokes, his smile, his charm, his energy that could fill up stadiums that he shared with, with so many. But rather, he lived his magical life through his uncompromising determination, immense intelligence and instincts, <clears throat> true generosity and consideration for humanity, a deep loyalty, perseverance, love of his wife, his family, his mother, Golbahar, his beloved brother, Pavis, and Puran, and their family, and ultimately his global community. My father finished his life on earth the same way he lived it for 91 years. It was his story, his legacy, and as his favorite song says, I did it my way. If we could please uh, dim the lights um, for, we would uh, like to show a video tribute sent by Shaul Mofaz, a former Minister of Defense of the State of Israel. Mr. Mofaz has been a very close personal friend of Yunus and Sarai Nazarian for over 30 years. Please watch the screen. Dear uh, Soraya and the Nazarian family, I have known uh, Eunice close to 25 years. My first trip overseas as the IDF chief of staff was to Los Angeles and hosted by Eunice and Soraya. I have become to know a real Zionist who took part in the war of independence and has empowered the state of Israel ever since. All these years, I had the pleasure of knowing Eunice. He was a true leader with big heart, smart and creative, serious but at the same time funny, telling jokes and keeping high spirit always. Eunice was a wonderful, warm family man who loved Soraya and was proud of his children and grandchildren. The soldiers 
and the commanders of the IDF were very close to his heart and he was always there for them. He cared for the soldiers and stood proud. One of Passover nights, Soraya and Yunus joined me and my family for the Seder at the Lebanese border. He wanted to be close to the soldiers. My dearest friend Yunus, your life were in Los Angeles, yet your heart has always been with Israel. This is a great loss to all of us. And for me personally, I have lost a true friend. Today, I would like to salute you, my dearest friend. Generations to come will witness and follow your footsteps and your generosity. You have impacted Israel in so many ways and in so many fields, culture, health, art, security, and so many more. On behalf of me and Orit, we say today, goodbye, dear friend. May you rest in peace. We will remember you and cherish you in our hearts forever. You will be missed. Thank you. One of my fondest memories is the trip my mother-in-law and I took with the Nazarian family back in 2002 when we joined them for the dedication of the high school at the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. As was said many times this week, Eunice and Soraya are not philanthropists who merely write checks. They become intimately involved in the causes they support. Similarly, with this project, Eunice served for many years as the Academy's chair of the board of directors. The incredibly talented young musicians of the Academy always had a very special place in Eunice's heart, and he, ver to, he referred to them as my flowers, for the beauty they brought into the world. The Nazarians would host these student musicians in their home in Los Angeles when they were flown in to perform at special events. These students became their family. Here now, please welcome Michael Kinghoffer, president of the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. Dear Nazarian family, dear guests, as has been said, Mr. Yunus Nazarian Zichronolivracha was the chairman of our International Board of Governors. And he used to call our students whenever he heard a performance in the midst of those long and tiring board meetings. He used to call them my flowers. For over a decade now, our flagship program at the Academy is the Saraya and Yonis Nazarian Honors Program in Chamber Music. On a day's notice, members of the program made this recording of Atikva in his honor. And I humbly present it to you with much love and gratitude from all of us at the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. I invite you to join our students, his flowers, in Hatikva. Please rest.
Thank you. This concludes our celebration of the life of our dear Eunice Nazarian. The family would like to make a special note in thanking the many individuals who traveled from abroad and within the United States to celebrate Eunice's life and legacy and to be with them in this difficult time. To all of you who are here tonight, the family would like to express their deep appreciation for your attendance and ask you to join them for a meal, a seudat mitzvah, in honor of Yunus Nazarian, which will now take place in Barad Hall. Thank you. <laughs>